Hi, my name is Caitlin Bracknell, and I chose my topic to be on Roman theater architecture. As you probably know, it had a major influence on modern day theater and architecture. And I'd like to go ahead and formally apologize for mispronouncing any Roman terms, but we will continue on with my sources, which include Oscar G. Brockett's History of the Theater Textbook, Roman Architecture, Buildings for Public Spectacles, Laura S. Clark's Theater and Amphitheater in the Roman World, the Metz Heilbrunn Timeline of Art History, Crystalline's Ancient Roman Theater article, and Sightseeing's Roman Architecture article, and lastly, Bee Breeders, the Architecture Competition Organizers. To begin, it is vital to know that the first permanent theater in Rome was the Theater of Pompeii, and it was not constructed until 55 BCE, almost 200 years after the introduction of regular drama, and over 100 years after the last surviving comedy was written. Roman theaters derived their basic design from the Theater of Pompeii. The Theater of Pompeii, which only the foundations are preserved today, was an enormous structure rising to approximately 45 meters and capable of holding up to 20,000 spectators. Pompeii provided a prototype that would be replicated across the empire for nearly three centuries. It's no surprise that the expansive nature of the Roman Empire left many nations highly influenced by their architecture and infrastructure. And centuries after the fall of the Roman Empire, many iconic national monuments were designed to imitate this historic period of architectural excellence. The six festivals that included drama had an average of 150 years of experience with stagecraft by 55 BCE. Therefore, 900 temporary theaters could have been built by that time. It is argued that our knowledge of ancient theaters, appearances, and structures is from several surviving wall paintings from Pompeii. Each painting differs in detail, so the general characteristics of these theaters are actually quite speculative. Scholars who attempt to recreate these temporary theaters have failed to properly reconstruct them, leaving out the elaborateness in the st of the stage's background, sizing, and the audience's seating. A Roman architect named Vitruvius compares Roman theaters to those of the Greeks, which he studied firsthand, but it's uncertain, however, what he bases observation of Roman theaters on beyond the theater of Pompeii. It is also argued that all of the architectural influence on the Romans came directly from the Greeks. Before the end of the century, two more Roman theaters were built, and they were the Theater of Balbus, which was 13 BCE, which sat approximately 8,000, and the Theater of Marcellus, which was 11 BCE, which sat approximately 14,000. A fourth was built, but taken down, and there are no other permanent theater recorded in Rome, although temporary structures continued and had an influence elsewhere. Roman theaters were also multi-purpose structures, much like the auditoriums and halls at Georgia College. Not only were recitals held in them, but they were also used as meeting halls and as amphitheaters. Though its Greek origin still continues, Roman theater had a semicircular plan opposed to the circular plan. This change was made in order to form just one structure between the stage, the scena, and rows. Its decoration is entirely luxurious. It included paintings, columns, and inscriptions, especially on the scena, where every design of orders is applied by Roman architects. Now for architectural details, I'll try to create a visual. The Roman theater was a fully enclosed edifice, unroofed, but often covered with awnings on performance days. Roman theater buildings were designed in the shape of a half circle and built on level ground with stadium style seating where the audience was raised. The theater itself was divided into the stage, the orchestra, and the seating section in the auditorium. The auditorium was occasionally reconstructed on a small hill or slope which could easily be the mimicking of the Greek theater traditions. Organizing the entrances to the Roman theater was important in order to safely handle the number of Romans in attendance. According to Vitruvius, the entrance, the aditus, should be numerous and spacious. Those above ought to be unconnected with those below in a continued line wherever they are and without turning so that when the people are dismissed from the shows, they may not press on one another but have separate outlets free from obstruction in all parts. They had corridors and stairways. The surrounding Roman corridor, the precinctio, separated the galleries of a theater were used for the walkways, concentric with the row of seats, 
between the upper and lower seating tiers in a Roman theater. The Romans cared just as much about the audience as we do today. They were very concerned with their comfort, therefore they perfected an air blowing cooling system for their comfort and to block the sun or rain they used awnings because the Roman theater did not have a roof. The audience seating portion of the Roman theater was called the cavea and arranged in wedge-shaped seating sections. Permanent theaters divided the auditoriums into sections. The stage, the scena, and the auditorium were joined to form a single architectural unit the same height across. The spectator's view was confined within the structure, and there was a box above the orchestra and auditorium reserved for the emperor or the magistrates of the charge of the festival. The stage, the pulpitum, was only raised about five feet, averaging about 100 to 300 feet in length. The plays made frequent references to passageways behind the stage with the, which explained the characters' movements off stage. The facade, the facade, excuse me, or skene fronds of the stage house stood three stories high and decorated nicely with paint columns and statues. The stage alone was covered by a roof for acoustic purposes, and dressing rooms were in the side wings, much like many modern day theaters. The Romans built theaters anywhere, even on flat plains, by raising the whole structure off the ground. As a result, the whole structure was more integrated, and entrances and exits could be built into the cave, as done in large theaters and sports arenas today. Altogether, the list goes on and on of Roman culture and Roman architecture that influenced the designs of buildings that wished to display an image of classic sophistication. The Jefferson Memorial, the L'Arc de Triomphe, the White House, um, that's just a few, but they couldn't look any more Roman if they tried. So thank you. I hope you learned something about Roman theater architecture and have a good day.